Hello, uh, survivors of the apocalypse. Welcome back to Atom RPG and playing hardball. Sad things, bad things have happened. Mayor Kovalev is dead. Killed by the thugs of this mechanic. Um, Ayem, Atemyev or, or something? Atemyev, yeah. <clears throat> and we have the information that this guy is actually at the mountain uh, at the mountain pass of Wu's, and that is where we are going now. So we have vouched or vote, rather vote, to actually shoot the guy with the mayor's pistol, the gun of honor. And I think we are even doing or putting this one further. So we are not only bringing this guy to justice, but we are making this this whole thing a huge symbol. And while we shoot the guy, we are going to wear the hat, the police cap. Yeah, that is our vow right now. So and now we are on our way to the mountain pass of Wu's. And that's where we go. We are very determined right now and still very sad. Is there anything else that we actually need to... Yeah, let's put this one here. Not there. So we need to prepare for an extended... Uh, an extended expedition. Yeah, well, maybe we actually we should bring some merchandise, but um, let's start the engine. So even there's there's even a th thunderstorm. So everything is really sad and bad right now. Let's drive here. We know that at Fogelevka uh, we can uh, hitchhike. Something. So let's go here. Do we need to eat something? Let's have a little break. The barbecue, yeah, 1000. So let's go there. Roasting meat, cooking. Now yeah, everything is fine now. No one has anything to allocate. Yeah, it's fine. And I felt that Alexander actually performed pretty nicely with his uh, auto crit on the first attack. Like he did 55 damage and something. So, <clears throat> yeah. But I have to say, like, uh, off role playing, I have to say that is very nicely done here. So we build a positive rea relationship as a player. Or let's say it was possible because that was just my personal decisions. We could have been very nasty uh, as well. Um, but we build a positive relationship also to his daughter. We help the guys and uh, well, we help the village a lot actually. And um, in doing so, obviously grew close to these guys and gals. Um, and then, you know, I was actually rather happy for uh, the mayor that, you know, after losing his uh, his job, basically, or rather retiring, and it was actually time for him, I think, um, he he got to feel some freedom again. Yeah, I think that was actually pretty nice. Exogen, you get a rusty AK that we are going to sell to someone who is willing and let's have maybe one of these flight helmets yeah, and otherwise i believe yeah alexander has 13 meat nine meat four meat and here we have six meat we have also plenty of water so i guess it's fine our old gas mask i guess it's fine so so we are locking our car then let's just talk to the people here. Maybe we can sell something. And did they did they see someone? That's also something I want to know. Here, Baljet. You saw anybody? Artemyev, a guy? No? Okay, well. Then 
Barkeeper. Have you seen a man called Dam Artemyev? No? Well. Strength 4 personnel. Why not? Not a lot of do, uh, to do around here. Well, yeah. Either the guy was very careful or he bribed everybody. Um, so nothing here. Well, actually, he's, he doesn't have enough money to buy anything. Not even the flight helmet. Oh, ah, oh, well, you can have the Rusty Makarov. That's good. There you go. We're at 68,000 now. Okay, then let's change the subject. Thank you. Bye bye. But there's still the lady here. The dark haired woman that is always kind of irritating in some way. Um, and she still only has her herbs. Okay, have a nice day, lady. Lawman, we are on your job. Just kicked ass in. Uh, yeah, well, and then the big question is what what should we do and what should we, we bring, actually? Yeah, maybe actually let's bring two knives, two sharp knives. Um, yeah, but I mean we have enough. We not, we have enough ammunition. I think eighty-five shots, five point four five, one hundred eight. Peter brings one hundred eight. Hexogen brings sixty-nine. And Alexander brings 97 for the uh, for his boom glove and an additional 30 to the 30 uh, and the PPS, so should be fine. Also, the percussion revolver is also loaded, so I think that's fine. Um, but maybe we are actually bringing a grenade. How about we bring a, one grenade just in case? Who knows what's happening? Because we can't bring our car. And maybe one of the explosives. But they are also rather heavy. No, oh, no. I guess we will... Uh, we will find one if we need one. Oh, and by the way, Fidel, you get one more frying pan. Yeah. There are the grenades. Let's have one. And in case we can't uh, we can't cook anything, let's have as an iron ration. Let's have two corned meat, hexogen. We also have two of them. They weigh 0 0.38. Yeah, two. But that's it. So all right, I think that's enough for the for the expedition. So let's go here. And then it is going to be expensive, but well, what should we do, right? We are on the hunt. The driver takes a short break from rolling a cigarette to greet us with a short nod. Howdy, boss. Do you need to go to the mountain pass of Woos? Yes, indeed. Have you seen a person called Artemyev? No. Well, and which part of the West is better for living? The part near Fogelevka, for sure. Life is calm and predictable here. Not that many gangsters around as well. When you hear shots fired in the forest, the first thought you get is it must be hunters. And only then you think of all the murderers out there. It's not like this everywhere. We see, we see. Okay, so. And how long have you been a driver for? Ever since my father put me behind a steering wheel to take a photo when I was 10 years old. But me, being the idiot that I am, I pressed the clutch and stepped on the gas. Ha, I almost killed my old man that day, yes. Oh my, well, we hope that you are a better driver today, huh? What can you tell us about Fogelevka? Well, it's quite a nice place. Fresh air, clean water, nature is friendly. And when the acorns from the local oaks start to be in season, my oh my, so juicy and nutritious. Well, we haven't tried the acorns yet, so we probably should do that, huh? When, when the season comes. So, and do you know any gossip? 
folks are nice here, but I'm especially fond of Constantine's family. Wife, husband, daughter, all three are solid people, real pillars of the community. Well, that sounds good. Well then, I guess we should start, right? We can talk more while we drive, huh? It would also be good if we drive fast because we we need to, you know, we have an appointment with someone. So, what's your price again? We'll get there quick as the wind. It will be 3,000 up front for gas and insurance. Okay, well. So, here goes nothing. Money isn't an issue. Let's go. The driver starts the engine with a blank smile on his lips and inserts the tape by the atomic love gurus in the recorder. Making the locals doomed to go on foot, slightly jealous, the truck starts moving. Let's go. Oh! Very nice, a little... A little cutscene here. That is the mountain pass of Wu's, okay. So that was expensive. There we are, okay. Caravanserai and a castle, okay, and by the way um, we, oh, we do have, oh, well, we didn't get anything to eat, huh? There you go, so that it was good that we brought corn meat, huh? Um, but that one give over here rather. Why didn't we eat anything while we were driving? There? Yeah, that's fine. So we lost 3000 rubles. We should have eaten something. Well, well, no, we were just. We had eaten something right before. So there are some sheep. Oh, have we ever seen sheep before? Let's make something funny for a second. We are drinking um, our special potion of animal interaction. Now we are the zoo man. Hello there. Pull over, we need to talk. I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. Uh huh, and you? Have you seen a man? I hope that the biting things from the forest won't get me. And you? I like being sheared. And you? I thought that humans couldn't talk to animals. Well, it's getting hotter and hotter. I hope I will be sheared soon. And you, little sheep? I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. I hope that the biting things from the forest don't get me. Well then, and there? I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. I hope that the biting things from the forest won't get to me. I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. Okay, so... Well, that is sort of fun. Okay, yeah. So, no one or nothing uh, else there. So, let's enter this building. And by the way, the Caravan Sarai, we have something. Ivan Ivanovich from Krasnosameni asked us to have a chat with Comrade Makhmudov of the Caravan Sarai. He must accept Krasnosameni at least nominally as his leader in the oasis. Ah, oh, let's. That we can do at a later point. We approach the entrance to the stone building and place our hands on our hips, admiring the architecture. At this very moment, an unshaven, moustached fella addresses us in a friendly manner. Hello, how do you like our caravan sarai? Well, it is surely impressive. The man touches the warm stone wall and nods with content. Indeed, a true beauty, and as long as artifacts like these exist in our world, we humans are gonna be okay. He turns towards us and extends his hand. We shake it. Yafarov, the local guide. Well, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Where can you guide us to? Because you see, we love to travel. Oh, I can take you to the old castle or the Zagoromensk. 
waterfall or to uh, no nah, forget about it the options are the castle and the waterfall and they truly are something the most scenic route free from monsters and gangsters will cost you just 10 rubles per walk uh, wait a sec where else can you take us it's not important so what's it gonna be the old castle or the waterfall what are you most interested in hmm well that is a bit disappointing well, you said an old castle. Okay, we, you got us intrigued. Uh, it's a real medieval castle, at least from the 15th century. Just know that I'll guide you there and leave, because I need to always be on the lookout for new clients. Not to mention that my relationship with its inhabitants is, to put it, uh, to put it mildly, complicated. Okay, well, we understand. Do you actually barter? Oh, you only eat some biscuits, huh? Well, we've changed our mind, so... And the waterfall sounds nice. What can you tell us about that one? That place is definitely something. Its water's red like blood. I don't know why, though. A fair warning. I'll guide you there and then leave, because I need to always be on the lookout for new clients. But don't worry. It's impossible to get lost on the way back. Well, okay. Well. Well. But let's... Yeah, we, we keep that in mind, okay? Uh, talk to you later. We actually, we like to go on alone. But however, uh, can we talk about something? Yaf Yafarov is leaning his back against the stone wall of the Karavansaray. He's looking around and whistling the Shostakovich waltz number two. Having noticed us, the guide smiles and stands up straight. Hello, friend. So what it's going to be? Well, listen, buddy. Can you answer a couple of questions? Well, all right, friend, ask away. Well, tell us about yourself, for starters. Yeah, I was an industrial climber before the war. Came here for work and then boom, the bombs started falling. Didn't realize what was happening immediately. I was on the mountains at the time, but as soon as I did, well, I decided to stay. Well, not surprising, huh? Can you ask something else? Yes. Tell us about this place. Well, the Caravansaray is a cozy place for the caravaneers to rest. It's managed by the commandant, Comrade Makhmudov. Of course, a lot of screwed up things happen here as well, and pretty often really. But still, I like it here. Is that so? Okay, we are happy to hear that. <clears throat> Can we ask you something else? Yes. Heard any juicy rumors lately? People say there's a lot of slave hunters near Krasnosnameni, same as everywhere, I guess. <coughs> I've seen plenty of their convoys from a hideout. Scum, what else can I say? They have no fear of God whatsoever. That they don't. That they don't. But well, we've met some of them. And uh, those are not a bother anymore. So can we ask something else? Sure thing. What should we expect while we are here? Well, beautiful views, salubrious mountain climate, as well as monsters, wolves, gangsters, slave traders, drug dealers, just everyday normal things, but wrapped in a beautiful candy wrapper. Aha, we see, well. Let's talk later, we will get back to you uh, for, you know, the guide. That might be an interesting investment and you surely can tell us some stuff, right? Oh, here. There's someone. We see a bald, tough guy sitting in front of us. His hands are clenching a clay cup with some kind of suspicious liquid. His body is safely covered by heavy armor. Having noticed us, the big guy lazily salutes us with two fingers and without blinking an eye takes a sip from his glass. Hello there, traveler. Are you interested in doing a little work? Because I can tell you that you're one hell of a guy. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you for your kind words. What's this job you're talking about? But maybe, firstly, who are you? Let's get acquainted. I am a merchant and an adventurer seeking from the north. However, right now I am in no mood for any extra adventures. The man points at his right leg. We lower our gaze and involuntarily shiver. His leg is covered with dirty, bloody bandages stained with yellow serosanguineous fluid. The skin underneath them is blue and covered in necrotic stains. Ugh. Yeah, that's how it is. 
I've been chewed up by some mutants. If my leg doesn't fall off, it will heal well. This is my first rodeo, but for now, the only thing I can do is sit here and sell things. And for this reason, I need some help from a traveling adventurer. Okay, uh, well, so let us guess, you need someone killed or something? Not necessarily, but it could come to that. You see, this one fat cat from Trudograd had ordered a crown made entirely from wolf fangs. A crown? What does he even need it for? Whatever, it's not important. What important is that I can't get the required fangs myself. I need someone to get them for me. I need a hunter. Well, that's easy peasy. How many fangs do you need? If, if we had known this, we would have brought some because we have a trunk full of stuff, you know? We probably shouldn't have told him this, but yeah. I mean, a trunk with quite some fangs in it. Not much else, though. Right? No, not that many. 30 should be more than enough. And let me be honest with you, any fangs will do because my client isn't able to tell the difference anyway. What do you say? Well, fine. We'll get you your fangs. Don't you worry. I'm not worried at all because I could tell from the very beginning that I can trust you completely. You won't let me down. And now, were you looking to buy something? Well, actually, why the hell not? Show us what you've got. Because we don't feel like bartering today, right? Let's have a look what you have. Oh, that's good. That's some stuff. Well, actually, yeah, it weighs nearly 200 grams. Like one, one of these big 14.5 millimeter rounds. But well, we are taking everything. 0 0.2 0 30 half a kilogram nearly yeah we take everything so yeah we take this one too so and your rubles because that stuff is actually weighing less than what we brought for you my friend uh, oh he's 130 uh, Okay, did we bring any armors? Oh, well, if we only had known, right? If only we had known, but it's fine. So, and then this here weighs four kilograms, so that's good. And the flight helmet weighs 0 0.48. Well, actually, like maybe, maybe Alexa, Alexander should wear it, huh? Should wear a flight helmet. 1900 and maybe we don't need all the cooking pans so do we have anything else here we're never going to sell the gun of honor Um, didn't we bring a hunting rifle? Oh, uh, well, I put it away. Okay, well. Yeah, but I guess it's fine. So this way... Now, uh, maybe we are actually... Maybe we are keeping one sharp knife, actually. Let's do that. Like so. I think that's better. And then we can rather sell something else. Yeah, I think it's fine. So we are taking that. Good. There you go. And can you answer answer some questions for us? Questions? All right. Why not answer some questions? Well, how did you end up here in Caravansarai? I worked here, the same as everybody. The North is a great place if you enjoy fighting gangsters and catching bullets. But if you are looking to survive, it's best to stick closer to the South. Well, thanks for the tip. Anyway, we have another question. Yeah? What else do you do except for being a salesman? I make things and promise not to laugh. I arm wrestle. Have you heard about arm wrestling? That's what I sometimes do for money. I have plenty of strength and endurance. Why don't we try that? The standard price is 100 rubles. Uh, well, wow, you are quite the handyman. Pun intended, huh? Well, we... 
Yeah, I would. I feel better if we quick uh, if I quick save before that. So, one more question first. Yeah, have you heard any interesting rumors floating around lately? People say that the political situation in the central wasteland is complex. I, however, think that it's plain, painfully simple. There's Krasens Armenia and there's Paragon. They don't like each other very much, and that's it. It's a story as old as time, like Eastern and Western blocks. Well, you're right, it isn't complicated at all. Not anymore, especially, since we arrived, but that's another story. Let's talk about something else. I'm listening. Do you have any advice for us? I advise you to stay the rest in the wasteland more what i advise you to stay to rest in the wasteland more often it's obvious that you know how to make a fire so use that skill and having an extra snack never hurt anybody wise words wise words okay so well we just started to feel snacky we'd better go find something to eat talk to you later especially about the arm wrestling there you go and like right now so about that arm wrestling um so why don't we try that? Here's a hundred. We pass the money over to the man and rest our elbow on the table surface. Our opponent does the same as we interlock our hands. There. Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, it's endurance seven. Okay. Failure. We are huffing and puffing, but our opponent is obviously stronger. Slowly but surely. Our hand is moving lower and lower until finally our hand touches the sticky surface of the table. It's done. The fight is over. And that's how I make a living. No offense. Okay, I'm not in the best shape here. I better go. Okay, that was embarrassing. I thought it was strength, and we have eight strength. But well, apparently not. So let's see. At some point we get maybe more endurance. I'm not sure like at which level. Maybe level 20 or something. There's someone else. Hello there, good man. We see a tired old man in front of us. From time to time he bends down with a sigh and begins to sweep dust with an old-fashioned bone brush. Having noticed us, the Jesus stands up straight and shoots an unhappy stare in our direction. Or oh, have you seen a man called... Uh, whose name started with an A? Oh, all these adventurers bumming around, don't bother me. Not all of us are wandering the world without any purpose. Some of us need to work. All right, old man, no need to get angry. And here, this fellow, a bearded old man, he looks kind of familiar, in a tubi taker, sipping a tea from a small porcelain mug and worriedly tapping his fingers on the tabletop. The old man's gaze lingers on us for a moment and he smiles politely. Welcome to the Caravanserai. How can old man Makmudov help you today, Aki? Uh, well, I don't even know myself. And who are you, my friend? I'm the Karawansarai Commandant in the Mountain Pass of Wuz, Aki. Comrade Makmudov, as the caravaneers and travelers like to call me. Okay. Well, phenomenal, by the way. Do you need any help with anything? Oh ho, well, aren't we nice? Maybe you can indeed help me, Aki. We have a problem that to you may seem insignificant, however, we find it rather perturbing. Come on, spit it out. There's a reason I brought this up after all, huh? Our Kogarsin has gone missing. The thing is, he isn't just a regular line cook or no. He's a darling of every caravaner, adventurer and mercenary who passes through our inn. Without him, people are starting to look for an alternative route through the mountains. After all, good food does wonders for Morel when you're on the road. Okay, how did he disappear? Hmm, I remember him acting weird for quite some time, smiling for no reason, whistling to himself. Maybe he started smoking weed. Oh, maybe he fell in love, huh? What if he's dead? What happens next? That would be bad, really bad. But I don't think he's dead. Arsen was acting strange these past few days. I'm sure something isn't right. This calls for a thorough investigation. Okay. So again, uh, how did he disappear? No, smoking weed well. We see what we can do. Um. Yes, Aki, please do that. Find our poor Arsen and better yet bring him back to us. Our lives will be miserable without his cooking. Well... That is surely understandable, but maybe he should have an assistant also, but well, that's another question. So fine, could we, but could we ask uh, you a couple of questions first? 
All right, all right, Aki. Ask me your questions. Uh, curiosity needs to be satisfied. Well, tell us about the Caravanserai. Oh, this building is around 500 years old, built during the rule of Shah Orkhirbat Or for merchants who did business with his army. Surprisingly enough, it still fulfills almost the same purpose, apocalypse or no. <coughs> what, a, a, what a great historical overview. May we ask something else? Oh, please. The mountain pass of Wu's, what's it like? If it weren't for the wild animals, robbers, and the bandits who took over the old castle, it would have been a real paradise. Untouched nature, the amazing Zagoromensk waterfall with its red waters, and according to rumor, there's an abandoned bunker somewhere in the mountains. Sounds good. We love abandoned bunkers. May we ask something else? Sure. What's the news around here? A land surveyor showed up recently. He's waiting for an official permit to pass through to Krasus Nameni. I've heard that he let your land surveyors walk around that you let your land surveyors walk around freely, but not us. His profession is much too important to let him wander around wherever he wants. The roads are dangerous after all. Oh yeah, that's a story we know about. R dangerous roads. Sad story indeed. Well, it's harsh but fair. May we ask something else? Sure. Heard any good rumors lately? Oh, they say that before the war, the Soviets conducted secret experiments in the area between our pass and the dead city. It's terrifying to even imagine what they were studying. Terrifying and unnecessary. After all, so many years have passed. Well, that is true. Well, to our knowledge, it's just a few years, but well. Okay then, so we are looking into the thing thank you and yeah you also you didn't see a person you know like a bit fat muscular looking pretty pretty maybe pretty pretty uh, shady aggressive yeah but also on the run maybe nervous ever heard the name ever heard the name uh, Artemiev? No? Oh well. Okay, but thank you. We'll get back to you and help you with your problem. Hello there. The fat man with the mad gaze that shifts frantically from side to side is so surprised when we approach that he almost jumps in the air. Without wasting any time, he grabs our hand and starts talking rapidly. Hey dude, are you an adventurer by any chance? Listen. Help a man out, I'll make it worth your while, my word as an officer, and you'll get a good reputation among the members of the court. Officer of what? The Pancake and Syrup Army. <laughs> Not important, we'll talk about it later. So this is what I need you to do. Wait a second, wait a second. Let's talk first. I mean, I mean we are intrigued for sure, but let's talk first, okay? What is this court you're talking about? The court of His Majesty Pippin, the Mouse King. He lives under the old castle with his princess and his entourage. If you could only see the parties they have down there. The mouse peasants bake cheese pies and pastries with russulas. The mouse chefs make stuffed pigeons, bread and aspic with cheese. Uh, well, now it all makes sense, sure. I hope you understand that the things you are describing are purely imaginary, huh? Our corpulent confidant opens his eyes wide, covers his mouth with his hand and makes a loud shh sound. Don't you understand? That if you start a rumor, sooner or later it will come through? Like this one drug dealer, I mean, I mean a mailman I know, introduced himself as Adam to every cop in Crosses are many. Then one day some Adam fella just materializes out of nowhere with a knife and a couple of questions for my buddy. So by that logic even... This mice kingdom doesn't exist. It will appear and they'll find a way to shrink me and invite me into the royal court. Imagine how long a bag of devil weed would last me if I were the size of a mouse. Huh? Well, now it all makes sense. Even more sense. Huh? Can we talk about something else? Sure, the topic isn't a position at the court. It can be easily changed. Well, if you say so. And well, what is this? What is it? What you wanted us to do for you? Satisfied that he got our attention, the fat man slaps us on the shoulder and starts telling a story. I'm a postman. Get it? 
used to bring mail to the local old castle when I had a client there. But the last time I brought him his package, I got into a little misunderstanding with his friends. I had to run and, long story short, I lost that important parcel somewhere around the castle. Can you go look for it? Yeah? Maybe? Please? I would have gone myself, but I'm afraid they'll shoot me. After all, we had quite a fight. I'll pay you an even grand. Well, that's not a bad salary for a mailman, huh? How come you have so much money to spend? I got it from my grateful client, so what's it gonna be? Well, it's a deal. We'll search the forest and bring the package. But for now, can we talk about something else? Sure, the topic is in the position at the court. It can be easily changed. So, we do have some questions, if we may. Well, if you insist. Well, who are you even, for starters? I'm Sasha Stanchevich, drug, um, a mailman to the people, a helper of everyday folk and a friend to the mice. Ah, we see. One more question. What is it? What are you doing here? I'm trying to catch my breath. The guys from the castle have, ta have taken away my client and made me a victim of persecution. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, another question? Uh, what's all that? And does this place float your boat? It's okay, but I don't feel at home here. It's these eyes. Eyes everywhere. Side glances. Well, that's textbook paranoia for sure. Uh, one more question. Spit it out. Do you happen to know any good gossip? Cause we love gossip. Uh, I want everyone to know that I'm a man of honor, even though they don't like me there. I must say that the old castle in the mountain pass of Wuz is an interesting place and the people there are pretty cool, but also dangerous. Okay, well, so let's see. Do you barter? Well, nothing that interests us. Okay, then thanks for sharing the info. We'll look for your, your things. Enjoy the evening. By the way, what time is it? 22.50. Hello, lady. The barmaid is yawning and dusting crumbs and flies off the wooden bar. She looks bored, displeased and busy at the same time. Let's be honest, that's a complicated combination. Spotting us, she shakes her head and speaks a short but important sentence. We don't have any vodka. Oh, well, then we have to leave immediately, right? Well, I'm sure you must have something. Let's see the menu. Okay, 100 bucks. Hmm. Yeah. Well. No, no. Well. We'd also like to ask you some questions, if that's okay. Okay, I could use some entertainment around here. Well, what's your name? I don't tell. Well, and where do you get your produce from? Good lord, mister. It falls from the sky, of course. Have you heard of manna from heaven? Once a week I go outside with a bucket on my head to catch it. But seriously, are you deaf from the traders, from the farmers? Where else? Sarcasm. We see. Can you handle another question? She gives us a bored nod. Is what you do a hard job? Would you like me to bring you an apron so you can give it a try? What kind of question is that? Hard, not hard. Only bad news travel easy. Well, you're right. Can we ask something else? The woman yawns into an open palm. What's life uh, like around here? Is it safe? Well, now that our humble canteen has such a strong guardian watching over it, what security issues could we possibly have? His questions could make any gangster brain overheat. Oh, what's wrong with our question, sir? But, well, I mean, you are smarter than you look, my dear. <laughs> Saying some something like this, you know. So, so. And what's the fresh gossip in these parts? Listen, mister, would you like me to wrap an old grandma's scarf around your head? It's a very flattering accessory, accessory for people who enjoy gossip. I'm sure you'll look stunning. One puts her hands on her hips and guffs at our own joke. Uh, at her own joke. Oh, yeah. Well. Okay, just so you don't leave any empty-handed, like that Rivlin fella who tore our roof apart a couple of weeks ago. Some men pass through here. They spend the whole night studying an old map, searching for the lost convoy. I have no idea what that thing is, but after their conversation, they went in the direction of the mountains. The lost convoy, you say? Okay, interesting. But uh, well, d have you seen like a small fat man? 
who was basically looking like fat and muscular at the same time. Maybe nervous, surely, kind of in a hurry. No? Okay. And uh, does the name Artem have ring a bell? Have you heard it? No? Okay. Very sad, but we'll see. Okay. Artemyev, right? Artemyev. So. Well then. Oh. Artemyev. The moment we enter the room, we spot an old acquaintance of ours. Wait, what? It's the hustler Artemyev himself, the man who dispatched mercenaries to kill Comrade Kovalev. Artemyev has also recognized us. Hey, are you, uh, you're that friend of Kovalev's. Without saying another word, he grabs the woman standing next to him and puts a gun to her head. Don't move or I'll blow her brains out. <gasps> Dear Lord, I should have known you'd throw me under the bus as soon as the going got tough. Shut up, bitch. The man's bodyguard immediately levels his gun at us. The situation is becoming more and more tense. This will end in blood. You're, go you're good at making enemies. After a quick glance at our colleague, Artemyev pressed the gun harder against the hostage's skin. I've got his bodyguard, amigo. Focus on the boss. I suggest you focus on leaving us alone, otherwise her blood will be on your hands. My oh my, as the wasteland hoodlum says, blood will spill. Hey, put a sock in it, old boy. Well, so chill out, Artemyev. There's no reason you and I can't have a nice, peaceful conversation. Like for a moment, at least. I've got nothing against you. You go your way and I go mine. No, never. We are, we are not even for a fraction of a second thinking of that. Well, what do we have here? Time to meet your maker, asshole. Go ahead and shoot. I don't know if it's broad and I don't care. <laughs> Nah, we are the good guys here, so, but we have not, we didn't put the police cap on, so we can't shoot him anyway. So. Chill out, Artemyev. There's no reason you and I can't have a nice, peaceful conversation. For a very short while, at least. What is there to talk about? Let's each other go on our own way. Don't you listen to the swindler, young man? Just shoot him dead like a dog. Oh, my mom was right. I should never have trusted you. You slime bag. She actually, she's she's very young and very beautiful for such a guy. So she's doing it for the money, I guess, huh? I said shut up. Surrender yourself to justice, Artemyev. I promise you'll get a fair trial. By the way, how did you find out Kovalev had left the village that time? You've got nowhere to run, you're a dead man. This Karavansarai will become your final resting ground. Yeah, I want some information first. So, by the way, how did you find out Kubalev had left the village at that time? I have eyes and ears everywhere, even in Sioma, Voronok's territory to the north. My men were watching Kubalev for a long time because, you see, I've had a grudge against him. Ah, oh, what a pity man you are, Artemyev. The gangster presses the gun to the woman's temple and clenches his jaw until it pops. Well, come on, you s surrender yourself to justice. I promise you'll get a fair trial. Oh yeah? Hmm. Jail with it. I'll try my luck. The mobster lets the wound go and she quickly takes cover behind our broad back. With a shrug, we lock both criminals in the room. Well, it seems we've come to a peaceful resolution. Eh... Uh, Again, TT pistol. Ah, we look at the door containing the thugs when suddenly someone cuffs behind our back. We look towards the source of the sound and see a short, tired old man who is staring around looking puzzled. So, what exactly happened here? Well, these two dumb asses were trying to escape from the law. They tried to take a woman hostage but have since then seen the error of their ways and are now awaiting trial. Yes, I will pass this information along to the right people and we will decide what to do with them. Thanks for intervening. Now go be on your way. Right, okay, see you later. Well, 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 moment, uh, just a second here. We are here to deliver justice. We are here to deliver justice and that is what we are going to do. Well, the guy... Actually, I didn't expect him to surrender like that. Um, but I guess he saw the determination. Here, there, the gun of honor. This is the gun of honor. 
And where's the police cap? There. Police cap. Also, also, these guys have curious body armor there. But that won't help them if we shoot them in the head, of course. So... But the good thing is they... Well, they could also get out of the window. So where's the old guy? Yeah, what now? Don't worry about it. The door's locked. I'll keep an eye on them. Yeah, what? I mean, we could shoot him, like, through the window, huh? Yeah, and what now? Hey there. A red-haired, sharp-nosed woman is inserting a cigarette into a long amber mouthpiece. It seems she's completely recovered from the unpleasant incident. The woman takes a short break from the cigarette only to give us a propitious smile. Thank you for helping me get out of that terrible situation, young man. That Artemyev, what a crook. I think on some level I always knew, but my heart... My heart loved him. A uh, young man, if you're older than me, surely not by a lot. Well, spare cigarette, I'm dying for a smoke. Fine, and who the hell are you? Young man, if you're older than me, surely not by a lot. Oh, are we on first name basis now? Well, fine, have it real way. My name is Marina. You are, you are a young man because you have the look of a lamb of God. So pure, so innocent. <laughs> Did you hear that? You have an innocent gaze. Hilarious. The woman shoots Alexander cold look and leaves his comment without a reply. I think that Signora is wrong about this particular lamb of God. Ho oh, oh, ho, not at all. I know people boldly. Like I always say, a compliment for the son is truly a compliment for the father. Yes, this right here was a compliment for me. This comparison to a lamb. Exogen's remark makes the woman giggle politely. She then turns to us making a cuckoo sign. <clears throat> uh, okay, what does she mean with that? Well, it's nice and all, but what was your connection to that murderer? We need to know. Also, you seem pretty calm considering what just happened. And what are you planning to do now when you are here all alone, huh? But yeah, tell us about your connection to that guy first. Regrettably, our bond was romantic. This respectable on the outside, man. With the portly frame made me fall head over hills in love with him. Oh, these were the times. Dates, flowers, the whole shebang. But as time passed, our feelings began to dry up, so to speak. However, when Artemyev executed his petty revenge on the old Kovalev, whom I have heard only good things about, he invited me to flee to Trudograd with him. And Trudograd, it's nothing like provincial Krasnamenia. I couldn't say no. Ah, well, and well, you do seem pretty calm considering what just happened. This is all just an act. Under this mask, I'm shaking because of the unbearable fear and the vile betrayal from a man who swore he was going to love me forever. And of course, because of unclear prospects for the future. So, hmm. What are you planning to do now when you are here all alone? I really don't know. I need to come up with something, but I just can't collect my thoughts. Hmm. Well, we better get going, Marina. Huh? Well, talk to you later. She gently touches our hand and looks into our eyes. Her own eyes suddenly filled with tears. Uh, it's a hard thing for me to ask, but could you lend me some money? The scumbag Artemyev hid all his savings in various places along our way. And now that he's out of the picture, this money is as good as gone. But I still need some cash, not a lot, to get to Trudograd. A thousand rubles should be more than enough. Uh... Well, you know, I usually don't hand money out to strangers. And don't say that you're not a stranger anymore because we introduce ourselves. Um, I, I also, I saved your life. Why are we even talking about the money? Marina squints in disappointment as she starts to pack her things. If you haven't showed up, none of this would have happened. Damn it, get out of my way. Hey, we didn't, I didn't say we, I wouldn't help her. 
She lifts her head up high and leaves the caravan side at a cracking pace. We follow her with our eyes. All right, then bye. Hey, come back. We want to... I, I didn't mean not to help her. Oh, come on. Well then. So now... Yeah, we are going to reload this one. But here the barmaid. What's going on? I wasn't planning to... Uh, Oh, miss, I hope you don't start a shootout in here as well. Well, that was an isolated incident here. Not really, but to ask some questions. Well, we need to... I mean, I, I we, we are here to deliver judgment. We, it's our job. Who's that, by the way? Oh, no, let's talk tomorrow. I mean, the good thing is these guys are without weapons now, however, that is actually a reason why we can't shoot them. But we, they can't get away just like that. So we are not letting them walk away. We are delivering judgment here. We are having a trial against them. We have the police cap on right now. And we are keeping it on. And we keep the pistol, gun of honor, in our hand until justice has been served so what's going on here can we talk with anybody the bald bearded man where is saying about these fangs you need when they are not now okay nothing there well then guide Yafarov Yafarov is leaning his back against the stone okay some questions no okay okay well it's certainly a good thing that we uh, caught up with the guy like and they Makmudov. Ah, of course, Makmudov is the boss here. So old man Makmudov is sipping tea from a tiny cup and scratching his thick beard. He gives us a friendly wink and puts his hands on the table. Oh, so you survived the massacre in the rooms, Aki. What now? Eh? Well, there wasn't a massacre, not yet. This Makmudov. No, we are not talking about that yet. Well, can you ask a couple of questions? No, let's change the subject. Okay, well then. Um, and you, Sasha, the fat man with the mad gaze that shifts frantically from side to side is so surprised when we approach that he almost jumps in the air. Oh, look at that. My future partner at the king's court is back. Okay. Well, then. We, we need to go in here. So. Can I open the lock? Come on. Then we go from here. I'm just trying this one out now. I don't know for whom they are actually heating up this room here, but whatever. What is all five and two? Can't see the target through the window. Well. So we are reloading this one. Also, I want to help the girl. So. There's the guy. Police cap is on. The gun of justice. The gun of honor. Is here. The moment we enter the room, we spot an old acquaintance of ours. Wait, what? It's the hustler, Artemiev himself. So, does he have his scar here? The man who has dispatched mercenaries to kill Comrade Kovalev. So, here we are. We found you at last. Ah, you are that friend of Kovalev's. Without saying another word, he grabs the woman standing next to him and puts a gun to her head. Don't move or I'll blow her brains out. Dear Lord, I should have known you'd throw me under the bus as soon as the going got tough. Shut up, bitch. The man's bodyguard immediately levels his gun at us. The situation is becoming more and more tense. This will end in blood. You're good at making enemies. After a quick glance at our colleague, Artemiev pressed the gun hard against the hostage's skin. 
I've got his bodyguard, amigo. Focus on the boss. I suggest you focus on leaving us alone, otherwise her blood will be on your hands. My oh my, as the wasteland hoodlums say, blood will be spilled. Hey, put a sock in it, old boy. Oh. Yeah, the gun of the gun of justice, so. Here it Atemiev. You know something? We are here because of your actions. You've killed a good man and we are bringing you justice. This is the gun of honor. And we shoot Artemiev in the head without harming the hostage. There. Closing one eye to better focus, we squeeze the trigger. Our bullet catches the gangster right in the forehead, splattering blood all around as he falls to the floor. His bodyguard is about to shoot back. We need to move fast. Attack! There. That's good. That's good. That's how we do it. So. Right in the head. Justice have, has been served. One bullet. That was one of the... Uh, uh, one of the bullets... Uh, our friend... Still had in the gun. So. And now actually, I mean, this guy wasn't actually involved, but uh, yeah, all of you guys, you're aggressive. We don't need to tell you anything here. Oh, Alexander will actually mess him up totally. <clears throat> so we just need to get out of the way, by the way. Well, so single aimed is four. We go for two. So we are just, we are shooting twice aimed with this pistol. We can't see the target. Then here, guy, are you just? Are you? How? How did Alexander? Oh come on! Alexander just went there. Well, how is that possible? Can we even go there now? I wonder. Well, we're shooting this guy in the eyes. Well, actually, and then let's let's go. Uh, let's go here for two, and then we shoot once more. There. Good. Very nice. He's using something. Forty-one. Wow. Oh 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 oh. Guys, what are you doing? Well then, so time. Why why is this weapon not loaded? Why is why is the crossbow not loaded? Well, you know. Let's shoot him in the eyes. There. They are very nicely stunned. They are very good. Alexander. They are very good. So justice has been served. The battle is over and the deafening silence that came upon us is interrupted only by a long, heavy sigh. We look towards the source of the sound and see a short, tired old man who is looking gloomily at the bloody massacre. <sighs> it's always like this when you adventure with you adventurer types. You have your fight, but who's gonna clean it up? Not you, surely. Uh, well, how, what does it do with us? They started first, right? Now, actually, we, we were here for them. Well, that's life for you. There are people who start the fights and there are people who take the blame. Oh, no. Hey, man, we feel bad. Here's a hundred. The janitor sighs and takes our money. Well, thanks for this. You aren't the worst adventurers I've ever met. Maybe. See you. So, let's see what they have. That was actually a pretty nasty double. Double shot there. Oh, and he's got super stim. Yeah. Oh, and he's got a Soviet army knife. Oh, 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 oh. And that is something for Fidel. Oh, and a bulletproof vest. 6B2, first generation Soviet bulletproof vest. 6B2 was designed in the late 70s and first used in 1981 during the Soviet Afghan war. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad at all. I wonder why he had a shift. So. Um, minus H dodge. So Fidel, you take that one on. 
and you take the rest. And there, so Artemiev, justice has been served. We, oh, he's also, he's got one of those. Yeah, very nice indeed. This GT pistol, yeah. We take those. Also super stim, okay. Very nice indeed. You take that and this here. Well, and then actually, well, let's give this one to Exogen to compare. Well, so justice has been served for sure. We were wearing the police, the police cap and we were shooting the guy with the gun of honor in the head, right in the forehead. That's exactly how I want it. So that's a good outcome. I'm very happy now because, well, they stood trial if only for a second. That was a symbolic thing because they actually, uh, they admitted their guilt and it was clear. And now the harsh world lacks a little bit of evil. So let's hope no one is filling that vacuum too soon. Let's see. So, okay, let's let's look at the spoil. So, but now the police cap. There's even a you know a drop of blood on it. We will give this one to Katya, and we will give the gun of honor with five shots in it to Katya. Justice has been served. We can be happy about that. So, and then what? So Fidel, like this here, the this, this steel breastplate is minus 8, this here is minus 8, 35, so it's way better. 35, 7, and ours has 35, 7, 1 dexterity plus 4 dodge. Yeah. So, and well, Fidel is a little bit more fragile. But I mean, he doesn't care about the dodge anyway. So, let's do this. And this Soviet army knife is plus 10 sequence. That's actually good for him. This one, it's 5 sequence. Also, let's us skin animals. 20 to 37. Oh, yeah, it's way better. Yeah. Chance ignore armor 20, critical chance plus 20. Now that's actually pretty good. 3, 4, 4. Step, aimed, and slash. Hmm. Now where is it now? Here there. Our knife knuckle duster. So there. Then hexogen. It's 35 and 5. Oh yeah, well good like that although actually I like hexogen in this one yeah so Alexander can actually get this one so now he's well protected Yeah, we, you could see it on on these two guys that they were wearing uh, the bulletproof vests Anything in there? Oh yeah. So Alex, you can take everything. They, someone said something. Laborous calendar to this article will teach you to craft a third tier metal crossbow. Well.
We already know that recipe. Labor's calendar, June 5th, 2003. Today is the 156th day of the year, leaving only 209 days until the next cycle. Name days for Adrian, Alexander, Andre, Vasily, Gennady, Daniel, Maria, Oy, Yudo, Kia, this day in history. On June 5th, 1945, Comrade Zukov of the USSR and the Allies signed the declaration regarding the defeat of Germany. I wonder if Comrade Zukov suspected that a mere 40 years later, later these so-called allies would betray our glorious motherland and turn the world into a gi gi giant atomic cinder. Well, not sure if they betrayed someone there, but well. The folk co calendar calls today the day of Leonti the hemp man. It's believed to be the best day for planting hemp. It is also believed you should pla plan your defense against drug addicts before the hemp blooms. A great folk instrument in this fight is the metal crossbow. Take parts from a wooden crossbow, some scrap metal fix in place with another scrap metal part. Use three empty tin cans to assemble the mechanism as shown below and with two pieces of rope create a reinforced string. And last but not least, remember that if you enjoy reading our publication, please consider sending a donation with a sober, trustworthy mailman to me, Comrade Magninsky, or to the Pitchkin's drinking house, where I can be found most days. Oh, yeah. Well. Do we have fear? Okay, that can... Stay there and here. Oh, that's condensed milk even, but that can stay there. Ah, oh, yeah, well. Yeah. We're not taking away anything from them. So here. So justice has been served. I'm happy. Quick saving. And what happens next when we talk to this lady in the dress? And she's actually, she's actually quite pretty. Quite pretty. What happens with her later on, we will see in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. I am happy justice has been served. We shot the scum with the police cap on using the gun of honor. Yeah, justice has been served. And we got some pretty good stuff from these guys. Two bulletproof vests. Actually, I didn't expect that. And by the way, like this here, is that a special? No, it's just a normal scorpion and a normal TT pistol, yeah. But that's actually pretty fine. So we do need to do some healing though, because we are messed up. Uh, we, you know, the guy empty two full bursts into us. And we are full of hematoma now. But, well, we survived thanks to our vest. If only barely. So, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you liked this one just a tiny little bit, please click the like button and the subscription button if you haven't done so yet. Because you help me tremendously, help the channel, and it is no effort for you. Thank you very much. See you next time. I hope you keep enjoying the content. Bye-bye.